Hi everyone, Tracy here. I wanted to take just a few minutes to talk about the challenges that I'm planning to do for August. And I have to start with my own challenge, the Crazy Days of August challenge that I created probably about two weeks ago on the full moon. Just got a wild hair and decided to do this. And I'm fairly new to the Instagram community, so I'm not tired of these yet, where I know that some people are. But what I did is I went online and I looked up holidays or other kinds of crazy days or memorial type days that exist in the month of August. And I created a, a little a pull challenge for each of those days. Uh, if you want to know what these days are, you can, all you have to do is Google them. It will tell you all about these different days. Some of them are very familiar to you. Obviously, we've got Lamas and the new moon at the beginning. But things like Be an Angel Day and Valentino Day, they're a little bit more obscure and uh, you'd have to look them up to find out about them. But the Tarot Perspectives Challenge that Kelly and Patrick are hosting for August, I do plan to do that one too. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the decks that I'm going to be using for that challenge. Now, <clears throat> my base deck will absolutely be the Ellis deck. This is my very, very favorite deck. And it's the one that most resonates with me and I'm most centered with, so it will always be my base deck. But for my other decks, I have a large collection of tarot cards. And I wanted to pull some of them out and start using them. And I thought that this Tarot Perspectives Challenge would give me an excellent way to pull out some of those decks that maybe had just been sitting and not getting any love lately that I wanted to, to work with. And I particularly picked decks with good guidebooks so that I could delve into the guidebooks a little bit more for an, intent, an, an intentional purpose. One of the things I'm planning on doing is I'll, I'll post the pictures to Instagram, but I am not planning on putting three, four paragraphs worth of reading material on Instagram because it just, it makes my head hurt when I see all that, all that text on Instagram. So I'm going to be doing this very much more personally as a personal journaling challenge so that I will take the, the three cards that I've drawn for that day and then journal with them that day. I may not get to do it every single day because when I get to journaling, I tend to spend, a, you know, an hour doing it. And some days I just don't have an hour. But that's what my plan is for that particular challenge. Uh, one of the decks that I am absolutely planning to use for that challenge is the Baseball Tarot. And I cannot tell you how thrilled I have been with the Baseball Tarot. It, I'm an American, obviously. Um, I grew up around baseball. I understand the archetypes that are presented on the cards in baseball without having to read the guidebook but the reason I am using this particular deck is because of the guidebook. The guidebook is so absolutely fantastic. It takes baseball, the, the, the fellow who wrote this or the people who wrote this by Mark Lerner and Laura Phillips they knew tarot, they know tarot inside and out, and they know baseball inside and out. So they can take the archetypes of baseball and fit them into the tarot archetypes just seamlessly. So this deck is definitely going on my list, the baseball tarot. I'm not going to gush over every deck like that because I just, I don't want this to be eight hours long. So, but I've just been so thrilled with the baseball tarot. It was just sort of a spur of the moment purchase and I wasn't so sure about that. So some of the other decks that I'm planning to use, The Legend of Arth the Arthurian Tarot. Um, I, I, well, as anybody who did Camelot in high school, I have a, a true love of Arthurian legend. Raven's Prophecy uh, has been sitting in its box and has not been used since I bought it, so we're gonna use that one. The Tarot of the Vampires, that one's gonna go in the rotation as well. I just, on Tuesday, bought the Line Strider. I uh, was I was doing jury duty this week, which put me a little bit outside of my normal paths, where there's actually a bookstore. And I saw this one, I never really had been drawn to this one, but I saw it in the bookstore and saw the actual drawing on the box, as opposed to just a, a picture on the internet. And I thought, well, yeah, I'm gonna give that one a try. It, it, looks, it looks very, very attractive. Let's see, some other decks that I hope to be using. 
would include the Phantasmagoric Theater Tarot. I think that one is just hilarious and fun. The Cook's Tarot. Now, I haven't seen a whole lot about this one on, on the internet. I haven't really looked for a walkthrough or anything, but I haven't seen a whole lot of people using it. So I'm really interested to see how it reads. It's got a really great guidebook as well that gives you, um, I don't have enough hands. The guidebook gives you key elements. That, I think that's the thing I like the most about this guidebook is she, the artist actually explains what the different elements in the image mean and what they meant to her when she created the card. So I'm really excited to work with that one a little bit. Let's see. And what else do we have here? We have the Animal Wisdom Tarot, which again has been sitting in its box since I bought it and has not been, been loved much. The, this one just came today, actually, the Light and Gray Art Lab's Cosmos Tarot and Oracle deck. It's way off the beaten path. It's not Rider Waite Smith at all, and it doesn't use the same um, astrological associations that the Golden Dawn and, and the Rider Waite Tarot does. But the artwork, it's a collaborative deck, and it's just, it's kind of really cool. So I'm gonna give that one a try. And then my original Guy and Tarot, that is the uh, original Llewellyn version of the Guy and Tarot. I'm going to give that one another try. That one has, hasn't really resonated with me in the past, but I thought I'd give it another go. And then uh, any other deck that I feel drawn to on that day, I say, well, I'm going to pull a, pull a card from that deck. There's also another tarot challenge out there that's less about pulling and reading cards. It's called the Tarot Addict August challenge hosted by when my soul whispered it's not really about reading cards so much as it is about you know taking pictures of your favorites and what was your first deck and that sort of thing i thought that would be an interesting challenge to get me to pull out my camera and actually think about the pictures that i'm taking probably won't do that one every day but i might do that one several days as well so that's what I'm going to try to do in August. I am still, I enrolled in the Tarot Summer School, Ethany's Tarot Summer School. I think I've done four or five of those. They've all been pretty good. I've been pretty impressed with, uh, with what I've seen in that. But fortunately, I don't have to, have to do those at any specific time. I can do those anytime. So whenever I have some time, I'm gonna, gonna throw in some Tarot Summer School stuff. I did kind of overburden myself in July and stop doing the daily draws with the fairy, the Hidden Realm and the Brian Froud's Fairy Oracle, but that's okay. I continued to do the Crystal Tarot Challenge and I've really enjoyed that. So thanks for watching. Have a great day and let me know if you're going to be doing any of the, these, um, these challenges too and I'll follow you on Instagram. Bye.